Good afternoon and welcome to the Cheese Society's Conversation with Tim Jones from Lincolnshire Poacher. My name's Lucy and this is Kate from the Cheese Society. We are Lincolnshire cheese retailers with a cheese eatery and cheese mail order. Um, and we're here today to talk to Tim Jones from Lincolnshire Poacher about the various age profiles of his cheeses and just a bit of a chat in general. Absolutely. Lots of cheese to go at, lots of cheese to taste. Beautiful okay. looking cheeses. We've yeah. got an array of cheeses out here on the tables. Impressive, isn't it? It is impressive. Beautiful looking cheeses. Um, various ages, some different styles. All sorts, yeah. Made this, made ostensibly the same way, but um, varying from <clears throat> about 18 months old to three years old. And made at different times of the year. And so we're going to taste through those and chat about why they're different. And excuse me, <clears throat> I've got a little cold. Mm -hmm. So... I think it, it'll be really interesting and I think it'll, you know, it, it'll, it'll help explain why making raw milk cheese is so tricky and, and is so variable and that's part of the joy of it is the cheese reflects the land and the cows and, and, and how we do it and we have to adapt to the changing fat and protein and the changing diet of the cows. So lots to talk about. Mm. So Tim, if you want to tell us a little bit more about the farm. Yes, for sure. So um, very briefly, our family have been farming um, in East Lincolnshire, we farm on 800 acres and we have a, a dairy farm um, and we've been making cheese for the last 30 years. So we've, we've been farming for, for 100 years um, and it's gone through the, through the family, through my mum's side. And then my brother Simon started making cheese in February 92. And really over that period, so we started in a very, very small way. And over that period, over that 30 year period, we've moved from what was ostensibly a traditional mixed arable dairy farm into what is now a cheese production business and we buy all of our milk or we, we don't buy all of the milk we, we get all of the milk from the farm so we only use our own milk mm -hmm. and literally this morning's milk will have gone into the vat and will be will be being turned into cheese now as we speak so it's we use super super fresh milk um, and yeah that's that's really that's that's really it um, we're, we're unusual to be in Lincolnshire making cheese. Most cheese obviously is made further west where all the dairy cows are. But my father 50 years, 50, 55 years ago said that he wanted to start making cheese and start, he, or he thought that cheese making might be a good thing. And so he, he got the dairy cows in and, and built the dairy herd. And, um, and then my brother took that on um, in the early 90s. Fantastic. And you it's were just a really good move though, hasn't it? Yes, it has. Well, the I mean, price of milk and absolutely. Yeah. So when yeah. we started in the early '90s, the milk price was really good, and actually, we we commercially making cheese probably wasn't the wasn't the the, great, the greatest idea. But but they, it was just something that he and Simon had wanted to do. But actually, over that period from through the '90s and, and 2000s, early 2000s, the milk price has been terrible, and and dairy farming has been very difficult. And so we we've been very fortunate that we're. In, a, in more control so we can we're in control of, of, of what we do and how we do it and we can sell our own product we're price we're not price takers in this in the way that milk producers are so yeah, yeah. No, we're very we, we're very fortunate and it's brought us into a world that we that we find super interesting we get to go on cheese trips and yeah. talk curds and weight to lots of different people <laughs> all over the world and and it really it's it's a light it's become a lifestyle business in a sense that we, we get to we're very immersed in in cheese and the cheese world, so no, it's been it's been a fabulous thing for, for, for both of us and for the business. You know, yeah. the business but is. We, we've also found because we deal with lots of cheese makers, it's a it's a club, isn't it? Absolutely. Almost. Mm. So you join the club, and it's really there's such nice people. Mm. It's, yeah, it's a wonderful a, industry to be in. It really, genuinely, it is. It, it's it's very sharing. We we we've come into a world. So when Simon started making cheese, he went round and visited lots of cheese dairies, and and in other industries, people might be much more clunch and tight and not want to share what yeah. they're doing but in cheese yeah. really almost to a, to a man everybody has man or woman i should say yeah. everybody <laughs> has lots of lots of lady cheese makers um everybody has been very welcoming and sharing yes. and and have no secrets and so we've we've taken that on in a way and we also share everything we do so if people come to see us there's no secrets it's not rocket science what we do yeah. um it's just attention to detail and doing things in a very particular way and and we want more cheese makers. We yeah. want if people come and want to make something similar to us, go for it. Happy days. You know, we, it, uh, there's room for more. Um, and if people are making good cheese, we all will benefit. So, no, absolutely. Yeah. Couldn't agree more. And also, cheese makers. Do you find you've got three cheese makers, haven't you? We have. Yes. Yeah. Do you find 
does it vary with each cheese maker on how you cheese profile? Well, you def- keep records, don't you? De- definitely. I mean, it, a- a- absolutely. Everybody does things slightly differently. Yeah. So everybody has a slightly different. And, and there's so many little processes in terms of how you do things and what you do. Yeah. Um, but trying to pick that apart is quite difficult because the milk is constantly changing. So the fat and protein daily is is moving and seasonally is moving. So trying to under when you look back and you try and go, okay, what why did that happen on that day and not that day? Mm. It's you you have some idea, but it's really quite hard to pick that apart. Yeah. And we, we have a young new cheese making team, so we're still you know we're all learning together. Richard, our our cheese maker for twenty five years. Um, retired in 2019 so three years ago and so we're we've almost not not start again it's not like that because you have yeah. great continuity with the with what we do but you you it's a learning process yes. always and and it and the cheese changes over time so from day one to now our recipe looks completely different i can only imagine what those first cheeses tasted like when you look <laughs> at the make sheet actually and how we made it yeah. because we had this very rapid acidification so we made a very quick cheese in the vat, which means you have a very quick maturing cheese. So we were able to sell it at nine months. Well, our cheese at nine months now would, 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 would no, yeah. not have anything. So <clears throat> it is a completely different cheese. And we've and so we've learned and adapted over time to use our milk in, in different ways or, or you know, to adapt the way that we use the milk and to, to suit us and, and, and our milk. And how fascinating to have that make history as well. Yeah. Oh gosh! Through the ages. We, I, I, I mean, our, our, our record keeping back in 1992 was not what it is today. <laughs> I have to say, looking at the make sheets, you couldn't call it a make sheet. It's just a few little notes written down, very rough and ready. Um, but, but it's, uh, but it's, and actually, funny enough, when I show, I showed John our, our new head cheese maker, um, wrote recently one of the old make sheets, and he couldn't believe it. A, how rough and ready it was, yeah. how little information yeah. it was, but also how, how quickly we made the cheese. I mean, they'd be home by. <laughs> two, two o'clock in the afternoon wow. because it was so quick. Is he but, suggesting you do it? Well, you know, <laughs> little bit of little bit of tension there, maybe I don't know, but um, but it, it it has changed such a lot, and it you know, but that's what you have to do in, in life and in business, and yes. you know, cheese is is a, is a long. You, you we're still learning. We've done it thirty years, and we are very far from. Yeah. You know, you don't you you can't. There's no one is the finished article because it, she's. Our milk, raw milk, is a tricky mistress, and, and, and it's very difficult to manage. And mm. it's a, it's an ongoing process. Yeah. What's the? Do you you um, put your cows out to grass? Yes. As how far into the year do you go? So we are. We'd love to have our cows out all the time. Yeah. That obviously would be preferable for lots of reasons, commercially and from, yeah. you know, for, for, from a, from a quality point of view. But we don't grow enough grass in the winter and our land would be too heavy so the cows would be miserable if they yeah. were on very heavy land with no nothing to eat so we tend to have the cows out from sort of april to october sometime in november it depends a bit yeah. on how dry it yeah. is and how much grass there is mm. and then in the winter we have them loose housed so they're inside but it's open big open barns on straw beds it's very comfortable and um so they're on a winter ration but in the summer interestingly we still feed a winter ration most of which we grow ourselves because that gives us balance to the milk. So uh, when they're milked during the day, even though they're outside to pasture, they'll come in and be milked and they have a, a bite to eat of, of a, as I yeah. said, of food that we have grown. And that gives us more consistency in the summer. Ironically, we, when we started, they were just on grass and the summer cheeses just on grass, we found we got these very wild, wacky, sort of yeasty, alcoholic, gamey, mushroomy sort of very wild flavors and not wow. not what we wanted yeah. so we used to make cheese just in the sort of autumn winter and early summer and then we stop so now we do the buffer feeding we call it yeah um we make cheese obviously we make every day um, and we make much more consistent cheese it's almost like a form of fermentation then isn't it in within the cow absolutely yeah, yeah, it, it, yeah. It, it it literally is that but also it, it gives you a our cows are high they they need a high energy diet and the grass just isn't quite yeah. enough to they need a bit more yeah. Um, energy in their diet, a bit more variety in their diet actually. Yeah. And as I say, we grow it ourselves. So we're growing maize and feed beet and barley yeah. into sown with uh, we whole crop into sown with peas and all sorts of lovely food. Mm-hmm. They get a, they get salt lick. They get a Nepalese salt lick, um, Himalayan salt lick to uh, that helps their digestion. And yeah. We get seaweed and you know our cows are on they're like royalty in terms of their diet <laughs> because what we put into them is reflected absolutely in the cheese and yeah. so we've learned that we need to feed them really well and we, we like to grow it ourselves because we yeah. 
then so understand it and we can control it. So. And that provenance is really important to people now. A absolutely. Yeah, well, yeah, it's yeah, it's everything. And people care, increasingly people yeah. care about how things are farmed, how your livestock is farmed and yes. how you feed your cows and look after them. And, and it, uh, but it does matter for the, for the cheese as well. So yeah. it's, it's yeah. everything. Yeah. How many cows do you have on the farm? So we milk, it's a great question. Uh, we milk 230 yeah. um, and they give us about 6,000 litres of milk a day. Wow. And that, so we get about um, 600 kilos of cheese. It's about 10 to one. Really. Yeah. So six thousand, six tons of milk becomes six hundred kilos of, of yeah. cheese, and we make cheese seven days a week. So it's a sort of ongoing, full-on yeah. process. And how many cheeses do you think you've got in store? We have. Um, it's increasing at the moment because we're making so much cheese. We're trying to build our stock up. <laughs> it's about thirteen thousand, some thirteen thousand a litre, and these are twenty kilos, so about two hundred and fifty to one hundred and sixty tons of cheese. Yeah. Um, so this would represent. So this is six cheeses, and we would get thirty in a batch. Yeah. A day. Yeah because we've been to the farm and we've seen Florence turn the cheeses. Yes, yeah, cheeses need physically turning over, so we turn, because, because the cheeses dry out over, over time, the top becomes dry and the bottom becomes wet, and none of you like, humans don't like that, and cheeses don't like it as well, <laughs> so they need physically turning over, and for years our cheese turner, Riche, turned our cheese um, by hand, so he turned 18,000 of these every month. He's a machine, he's, yeah. a, he's amazing. Anyway, Riche, Came towards retirement and so we thought we needed to have a better system and we we thought we would struggle to find somebody to do what he has done for <laughs> all those years so we invested in a swiss machine we called her florence florence the machine because the first one this is the second one in the country the first one is called tina turner tina the turner <laughs> so we call on the musical theme and um and she turns all of our cheese and it's amazing so she goes up down it so we had to completely reconfigure the store and she goes down the aisle, she has sensors, she finds the cheeses and literally pulls them into the body of the machine, turns them over and puts them back. And it's incredible. So we haven't, we haven't replaced Reach, we, have, we, oh, we, we haven't replaced him with a machine. We, there is a guy called Andy who's joined us and Andy now looks after Florence and still is. So it, it's, it wasn't a labour saving device as such, it was a back saving device. Yeah. But we still need But also the it. height of your store. I mean, it's impossible. To yeah, well, that's mm -hmm. right. They're up to up to about um, 15, 16 feet. Yeah. So, yeah, it, it, it wouldn't. It, it's a brilliant system, and, and she's amazing, and she works 24 7. She does, so, yes. Yeah, she doesn't go on strike. She's a good addition to the team, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, should we try some cheeses? I think we could do that. I think yeah. so. Where are we going to start? Well, we're going to, I'm going to start young and then we're going to go, not quite young to old, but we'll start with so this. So we make Lincoln Chipotle every day, but we call it different names depending on when we grade the cheese, we taste the cheese at 15, 16 months and we decide how long we're going to keep it and what we're going to call it. So this would be our sort of standard Lincoln Chipotle and I'm just going to pop that in. This was made on the... 8th of May 2020. I'll just dig out my pen knife if I have it somewhere. Sorry. I've got one if you need so one. I probably have one. I have. Okay. There you go. Prepared? Well, sort of. So this is the knife we use in the store. So so this is um, whatever it is, 17 months old, which would be pretty typical for our youngest cheese. And So the summer cheese, cows are out of grass. Lovely fruity flavours. Yeah. And it's balanced. Got good acidity to it. Yeah. Mm. Got the mate sheet. So we have a mate sheet each day. Yeah. Very wet, so it was it rained on the eighth. We always record the weather on the mate sheet. Yeah. And yeah, the way it was made, it was a relatively slow acidification. So you, you would expect that nice balance. So we have a vet, if we if we get too much acid too soon in the vat, you tend to get you retain more moisture, you tend to get these slightly wilder flavours, slightly sharper tartar flavours. Um, so what we're looking for, and in terms of how we make it, I suppose it's worth saying, you know, what is Lincolnshire poacher? Well it's a cross between a cheddar and more of an alpine style, and that's how we've adapted it over the years. So we've we cut the amount of starter that we put in the milk, and that means we allow the milk to speak a bit more. We use a different starter to the West Country cheddar makers. Yeah. So we use a, we use a commercial 
sachet starter, freeze dried sachet starter, but we use a tiny amount. It's, a, it's literally a teaspoonful in 6,000 litres. Wow. And then what those do, what those um, um, cultures do, is they consume the lactose, the, the sugar, and they turn it to lactic acid, they sour the milk. But we do it very slowly. So early on, when we started making 30 years ago, we put the loads in, yeah. matured it quickly so we could sell it more quickly. Yeah. But you, get, you don't get the depth of flavour. And what we're looking for is lovely, rich, complex, long flavours, like a good red wine or any good food. Mm -hmm. It stays with you, flavour stays with you mm -hmm. and changes. And that's what we, and that's, I can still taste that okay. cheese now. Mm -hmm. I was just thinking, what could you know, it's not, and it's, you wouldn't call it strong. You know, strong wouldn't mm -hmm. define that, but you would call it complex and interesting. Yeah, yeah. And that's what we're looking for. And, and for the, really for the, for the milk and the cheese to reflect, um, to reflect what's happening on the farm. And, that, and I think that, that, that does. And it's actually got quite a smooth texture. Yeah. Mm. Yes, it has. Yes, I mean, slightly alpine, certainly. Yes. And that's not, you know, the texture does vary as well, inevitably. You know, if you mm. retain a bit more moisture um, in the in the curd, then then you know it will be it'll be wetter and have a have a different sure. texture. Have it not as not as smooth. Sometimes it's slightly stickier yeah. than that. But yeah. that's you know, actually that's you know nice cheese, and that would age. You know that cheese because it's in balance, cheeses that are in balance, again, like with red wines, if their flavours are in balance, they will tend to go on. So that'll, that would mature nicely and those flavours would, would develop, it would dry out a little bit. So yeah. cheeses lose, we lose, in the store, we lose about 10% of the, of the weight of the cheese. So they'll go into the store at about 20 kilos and they'll come out at about 18 kilos, yeah. give, give or yeah. take. Okay. And that, so that maturation allows so supermarket cheeses in a factory situation, they would mature in plastic. And they, they don't go They don't anywhere. lose any moisture. So yeah. that's why supermarket cheeses quite often have that slightly fudgy texture, that soft yeah. texture, because they want the moisture in the cheese because it's moisture's money. Yes. We don't want the moisture because moisture also, if you remove the moisture, you get more flavor and texture. Yes. So it's yin and yang. I'm not, it's not right or wrong particularly, but no. it's just not what we're looking for. Um, we're less worried about, you know, get sweating the last, yeah. gram out of the milk but we, we're much more interested in trying to get good flavours. Yeah. Just as a matter of interest, you don't bandage your cheese? We do don't, you? no we don't. So traditional cheddar, they cloth wrap, well they, they cloth wrap and then they put lard yeah. or butter, typically lard, on the outside of the cheese and that's the historic traditional way of doing it. Now they, it's a great, it's a great thing, it's, it's a pain to do I think, yeah. but also it doesn't, you don't protect the cheese that well with that old system so they tend to get a bit more blue mold getting in and a bit more damage and a bit more cheese mite mm -hmm. with with their cheeses so we use a modern system so it's a it's a dutch product and it's um it's like a it looks like pva glue and you paint it on yeah. and it allows it to breathe and dry out in the same way but it shrinks with the cheese yeah. and so it gives you this lovely i mean you can't see it that well on these cheeses but it, when we when we wash the moles off the outside you get this lovely sort of leopard skin yes. rind on the outside but it, mottling, yeah. and we don't get a lot of damage with our cheese and it does give it a very particular texture so it's it's the modern versus, you know, we're not yeah. constrained by the history and tradition of making, no, you're making your own traditional history. cheddar, we're doing our own thing. And so yeah. we, 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 you know, we've chosen that. Well, actually the chap who taught Simon how to make cheese, Dougal, used that. And so he, Simon took that on because it worked for Dougal. And, and we've had lots of, lots of people visit us to see the rind because it obviously does work. I mean, yeah. it's, it's known in the industry that this does it as a good solution. And other, other cheeses use it, so Berkswell, um, delicious sheep's cheese from Warwickshire, yeah. they, they use it, and, and many, and many others. It's a really, it's a really good solution to what is a tricky problem when you're keeping cheese so long. Yeah. You, know, mm -hmm. you keep cheese for three years, you need to protect it yes. really well. Yes. It's not an edible rind. Though, it's is not it? an edible rind. No, yeah. you're right. But you can, you can cut it very, and it wouldn't do any harm particularly. But I, you know, I would certainly wouldn't recommend eating it. But you can slice right up yes. to the rind, and what you find is right next to the rind, you get this delicious, very dry nutty, mm. almost parmesan-y sort of, the, you know, I, the bits near the rind, I will, you know, sometimes just shave very fine on pasta or, yeah, or a salad or whatever, and yeah. it's, it's because it gets, because it dries out a bit more towards the edge, it's a bit um, wetter in the middle. Yeah. Um, no, it's a, we, we really like it, it certainly works for us. Well, the good thing about this is that we don't get a lot of damage on no. these cheeses, because it's not really what people want, is it? No, absolutely, no, no, no we've got, we, we are all slaves to our customers, and rightly so. And yeah. our customers pay our wages, and we yeah. we want to give them a product that not only tastes good but also looks right yeah. and doesn't have lots of damage. So, yeah. we, you know, we make lots of effort to try and to try and do that. And just talking about poacher through the decades, how has the rind changed over the years? 
Um, How did it start off? Well, it was the same notes always, so we've it's always, always used the same. the same. Yeah, always use the same. Wow. Um, we, put just two, the we, put, we put two coats on it, but it, interestingly, it changes through the year. So, and and over the year, so sometimes, occasionally, you get diff so we think different levels of moisture in the cheese attract different um, molds onto the outside. So okay. sometimes you get, you can get a layer of black all the way around or you get different mottled spots, different colour mottled spots, so you can get reds and greens and blues and yellows and oranges and all sorts of different colours. It's a, a, you know, in the store it does look amazing when you go all the way around the different ages and see them, see the moulds developing. We keep our cheese store very humid, so it's a sort of 90 plus percent humidity. We put about five tonnes of water down every week onto the floor wow. to keep the humidity up because we don't want them to dry. If these cheeses dry out, our bank manager's gonna get very excited because we're gonna start losing, of you losing yeah. lots yeah. of cheese. So we need it, so yeah. it's really high humidity and we keep it at about 11 or 12 degrees centigrade at a sort of regulated cave type temperature. Yeah. Fantastic. Should we right. try another one? Yes, what's yeah. the next? Right, so this is the same sort of age this is a month, it's a month old, so 10, 10th of April 2021. So this is one I've identified as, and we've called this vintage poacher. So this is one, it, it won't be quite ready, but it's one we would mature for a bit longer. Lovely clean ball, nice and firm. So only a month older. And I mean, to me, it's got a sort of slightly milky note. It's actually, if anything, got a bit more flavour. It's got a little, but that's, it's just lovely. It's, it's got a sort of meatiness to it. It has. It's got a lovely richness to it. Mm, and that'll go, depth. that'll go on and on. Yeah. I mean, actually both those cheese are really nice. To me, that's got slightly, a little bit more to it. Mm. A little bit more character. Mm. Both delicious, but that's, and, and it's got, a, it's not only savoury, but it's got a sweet note to it mm. as well. It has, especially on the finish. Yeah. But again, stays with you. That's good. It does. No, I, funny enough, I didn't. So when I picked these cheese out last night, I just I looked at the <clears throat> at the notes, but I didn't taste them. So yeah, I didn't quite know. What to expect? <laughs> Those are both. They're, Always good to get. They're both, they're both delicious. They're they're not nice. say, you know, not, yeah. you know, all our cheese obviously is delicious all the time. Of course. But some <laughs> some are more delicious than others. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so so yeah. So the vintage. We, when we call cheese vintage poacher, we te it means it's the cheeses we really like. And ones that we think need a little bit more age. So we'll give that, I mean, what is that now? That that would certainly go to two years, so it would go, we'll probably sell that sometime after Christmas. Yeah. Um, Your definition of vintage is anything over 12 months, though, isn't well, it? Well, it's, it's not even that, no, all our cheese, no, so the youngest cheese we would sell would be about 16 months, actually. 16, yeah. Um, and really, vintage just means, it's, it's not about, it's not about sharpness, it's about complexity and interest in, interesting flavours that will mature, and we just tend to mature it a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. But it really means it's cheese we like, and it's always the vintage is always over eighteen months, yeah. so somewhere between eighteen and two years. But the most important thing actually is the flavour profile, sure. and just what, just it's you know again it's like wine, and it's just picking the wines that have the most interesting flavours. That's interesting, what, those new monsters. That's what we're interested in, and it tends to be firmer body cheeses. So that if if the make is a bit wetter and you've retained a bit more moisture, you might get a bit more bowing on the cheese. Yeah, okay. And you tend to get with more moisture, you tend to get these slightly wilder flavours. So you might get those sulfurous, farmyardy, mushroomy, yeasty, yeah, whatever, yeah. but again, those, those flavours rather than the, the more meaty, savoury, sweet, those sort of nice characters we're looking for. Okay. Fantastic. Right. right on to the next. Number three. Uh, so actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go. This we'll do this one. This is yeah. March 20. So this is March 20. So we've gone back a year. So this is two and a half years old. Okay. And this is a cheese we've identified as being a slightly wacky, <laughs> slightly okay. wacky one. So we'll see. So a year on, it will obviously be a bit more, the flavour will be a bit more full on. Yeah, and, it, and you can smell it. You, know, you wow. can smell, it's just, full it's around, just, yeah. it's, so we call we call this one double barrel, and this is based on the selection, but also we then mature it on. And these tend to have those what I was talking about, those slightly wilder flavours. So you get that instant hit at the back of the yeah. tongue. And that's partly the age, but it's also as much to do about the, the, the flavour of that batch. Mm. Yeah, and it's it's big. It is big. Softer. 
So older, you'd yeah. expect drier, it's not it's softer because it's wetter, because those wetter cheeses tend to have those wilder flavours. Yeah. So when people are looking for strong, whatever strong means, I never quite know, no. but I think that's more what they're looking for, is that hit of flavour. Yes. And it's got that concentration, but also the sort of slightly wild, you know, what people associate with strong cheddar. Yeah. Yes. And it's a little bit more... You know, these are much more, these are more refined, particularly the vintage is more refined. This is a bit more all over the place. It's like a sort of slightly unruly tea teenager who you really like, you know, they're, and they're fun, yeah. but they're just slightly wild slightly and, wayward. And, and, and sometimes makes bad decisions. But, yeah. you know, it's, it's got character, yeah. but it's a little bit more all over the place. So, but I, and I know it's, a, it's the style of cheese I can sell day in, day out, because yeah. there's lots of people out there who really like those lovely wacky full oh, on really as well, yeah. and yeah. the double barrel definitely does that yeah it's deliciously memorable that one, yeah isn't it? but but interesting i mean obviously it's very different in age but actually made it a similar sort of time of year and yet you get a completely different flavor profile based on I based on the name prefer it's me too i mean absolutely yeah. but it's not you know something we've learned is it's not for us it's not about what we like not particularly it, i mean we <laughs> you make stuff you like inevitably but I know we have lots of different customers who like different things. Yeah, so, so it's you know, and you, there's there's a market for all of those. So I'm just gonna have a quick look at the milk sheet. What happened there? No, it was, there's nothing particularly untoward on that. What so, was the weather like? That's fascinating. No, and Simon didn't weather. write the weather. Simon yes, made that. He, Simon. he didn't write the weather on very naughty. <laughs> but he normally Slacking. does. Yeah. So nothing un So nothing. See, it's amazing, really. Mm -hmm. Such a different flavour. Nothing really in the make. It's almost identical make to that one. Okay. But. The milk, the fat and protein already. would have yeah. been different. Yeah, completely different flavor. Mm -hmm. So, but I mean, it, it, interesting. And then, so the next one we're going to try. This is we don't get a lot of this, and yeah. it's not something I should really probably talk about because, <laughs> because I get so little of it. And it's one we call knuckle duster. But I just yeah. think it's interesting to talk about in this environment. Yes. So once or twice a year, I get a batch of cheese, and it goes really bonkers. Yeah. And so we take that those cheeses on, and we keep them for three years. This is only two and a half, so well, we won't yeah. sell this till next year actually. Yeah. And we call it knuckle duster, and we sell it under the counter at markets and stuff. They have to have a password. And they, yes, it's, you, need, you, need to know, you need to know the, the knuckle duster handshake. So it's, it's so two and a half years old, so it's old. It's yeah. June uh, 2020, but soft. Yeah. And again, that's what we'd expect. And it can smell that. I mean, that's just all wow. over the place. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. And that's almost, that smell, it it's, almost al it's, it's almost alcoholic. It is. That's, that's the way I would describe it. Which, it does have that fermentation. Yeah. But again, it's sort of double barrel on speed, I think. Mm. It's, yeah, an instant hit, the mm. flavour. Mm. That's a lot more alpine to me. But actually, do you know, you get that hit. But it's lovely. But it is lovely. Mm. It's a little bit all over the place, but it's got a real depth of flavour. It does. But it's got that real al alcoholics, the way I would describe yeah, it. Yes. It's almost, you know, it's like... I don't know, whiskey or yes. and it's and it's got a little bit of sort of gamey, venison-y, that sort of thing as well. Yes. Going in. It's very complex actually, isn't it? Yes. This one? Yeah. Never was it is. Well sometimes and, and the, the again, we're calling it nothing duster, they're not always the same, and sometimes they're really off the charts crazy. That's not as crazy as normal. And actually I'll need to probably keep that a bit longer. So I'll keep that for next Christmas. Yeah. Wow. So it'll be three and a half years old. Fantastic. And then those flavours will come out even more and people will go mad for it. But how often do you actually taste your cheeses? So we don't, lots of cheesemakers taste it through its life. So they'll yeah. go three, six, nine, twelve months and they'll adjust their make, what they do on the day, based on their tastings. We don't do that. We trust the make. So we, yeah. we feel like we have a handle on the make. And if the make goes right, we're pretty confident everything else is going to go right. And we, what we don't want to do is fiddle too much and then not feel in control no. of it. So we actually only taste at maturity. So we taste at 16 months and then depending on what's happening we might taste it again three months later just to check it and see okay that needs another couple of months and yeah so we yeah. we tinker from there on in but typically at 60 months so cheese is quite often like the um whatever it was the may cheese that yeah. would have been tasted recently and that'll go out shortly okay so it's you know take your pay your money take your choice that's yeah, absolutely that's just what we do um, well, it's a shame that one's not always on offer because I'm so sorry. that's uh, an <laughs> exquisite cheese. I know, it is. <laughs> well, no, I don't know how to take that. What's, lo what's lovely is they're all so different. You've they got, are. you know, you've got the fine wines and then you've got the sort of, I don't know, the sort of slack. Yeah. I, 
I should have a better way of describing it, but they're sort of slightly wilder yeah. things. Yeah, those dusty but bottles you have the Yeah, there. that's right, and not everyone's <laughs> bag, but definitely they've got some merit and they're really both very interesting and different. And that's why yeah. part of the joy of what we do is it's not just bang, 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 the yes. same, push it's a button, and it's the same. Production you, you, you know, the cheesemaker has to be on it every day. And so yes. although what making cheese is routine, actually, it's anything but because it's just, but it's the very fine detail. Yeah. It's just adjusting that every and, day. And it's that alchemy, isn't it? Really, mm -hmm. just introducing well, it's a curious that. mix. It's it a is. curious mix of science and art in the sense that you have to get your detail of science right. Mm -hmm. so you've got to get your acidification. You've got to get your temperatures. Yeah. And you've got to do yeah. the technical bits correctly. Yes. But then you've also got to go. Well, that curd just feels a bit wet, or and they'll put the curd in their teeth and check whether it's squeaking, and they yeah. just needs another five minutes or you just so part of it is just the judgment on the day of yes. you know of, of adapting yeah. to what's happening and that's and that's a learned skill that's not that's practice and that's doing it every day for, for, for yeah. years and you know it's doing it to it absolutely and and you know and it's not everyone not everyone can do it you know yeah, some are yeah. better than others and you know that's it's the an love. instinct though when it comes to I that think so, well it's both isn't it I yeah. think it's a bit of that it's a bit of a bit of instinct a bit of judgment and a bit of practice yes. is, or a lot of practice and a good palate and yes, a good palate, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, 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 and caring and, and yeah. you know, taking an interest. I mean, when customers come into our shop, we really encourage them to taste. Um, because, you know, you, you can tell by the faces whether it's their, their type of cheese. And there's no right or wrong with no. tasting well, cheese. We, we all, so interestingly, we all taste cheese differently. And we, <clears throat> so Simon and I do all our grading. We taste all the cheese together. And we're pretty aligned, broadly, on a sort yeah. of macro level of what it is we're trying to get and, and knowing the flavours, but yes, yesterday or the day before, we were trying cheeses and we just were not aligned. And he was going, well, I get a little bit of a bitter flavour at the end there. I go, I just don't. Yeah. So sometimes, you know, we all have different tolerances within our palate. And yes. I, you know, some people pick up bitter more quickly than others. And, you know, or, or it can be on the day, you know, yeah. you're, if you've got a cold or if you've had a meal or yeah. all these what things. Eaten, yeah. you've had a coffee before and and so it's really good to taste with other people because you, it gives you some calibration. We don't like. Yeah. We do sometimes taste our own, but don't like doing it because you don't have any calibration, no. and you can never quite be sure that you're Maybe you're seeing. You're, in, in, each other. you're not in perfect vision. Yeah. You, you, yeah. You, it's really useful to have someone else. So. Absolutely. Okay. On to the next. On to the next. Oh, so now. now this is something completely different. So I'm going to just tell a story, a brief story. Um, during, well, about 20 years ago, Richard, our cheesemaker, forgot to turn the steam off one day and completely cocked it up and cooked the cheese rather than to 43 degrees, he cooked it to 50 degrees, which is a disaster. And you could potentially kill the vat completely. He didn't kill the vat, he did make some cheese, but it was not the Inch Poacher. We stuck it on the shelves, didn't, tasted it every so often, didn't taste it much. It got to three years old and Randolph Hodgson, who owns Neil's Yard Dairy, came up and taste, was tasting cheese. We said, oh, try this one, Randolph. And he goes, oh, that's a bit different. I really like that. And he bought the whole thing. And we, so we couldn't believe it. This cock up had sort of survived. Yeah. Anyway, we held on to that thought and, and fiddled around with that recipe a little bit over the years, but not a lot, because we were busy doing, doing these other things. And then um, lockdown came and our milk buyer, we were selling two days milk a week at the time during whenever it was, March, 2020. And so it was either throw the milk away or turn it all into cheese. We didn't want to turn it all into cheese because the world was ending and we didn't know what the future was going to look like. So we made three days a week, we made what we call poacher 50. So we cooked it to this 50 degrees and made this more sort of parmesan-y cheddar-y cheese. Yeah, wonderful. Um, that would take longer to mature. And so this is experimental. Fantastic. So this was made on the 7th of April. 2020, when Boris was about to have his parties. <laughs> it's really firm, so it's drier. When you cook the curd to a high temperature, you dry it out a lot. Yeah. You can see it looks completely different. Um, so the cheeses that we made during lockdown are now just starting to come through, but these aren't even two and a half years on and not quite mm. ready, but nonetheless delicious. A nice sweetness on the nose. And much firmer, definitely sweet. It's just different as well, isn't it? It's yeah. So crumbly. Mm. But it's, you know, you could imagine that again. It'd be wonderful. On that. Shaved, shaved on risotto or yeah. or pasta or on a salad, shaved or you know very finely cut off. But actually, just as an eating cheese, it's good yeah. because it's not as dry as parmesan. It, it, it's an eating cheese as well. But it's. Do you think 
think also you find interesting. I'm not getting that length of flavour no. that I was getting from those. But things. it's young. You see, for yeah. although it's two and a half years, yeah. it ain't ready. Right. So that's okay. I think, and I think that has got legs because it's very clean and the flavour's still yeah. with me. Yes. But it's definitely it's a it's a it's not as big a mm. profile as these ones because yeah. there's less moisture. Yeah. But it will that'll take more time. But I mean, delicious. Very delicious. I really like that. And so interesting how different it is to yeah. this. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it is effectively a different cheese because we've cooked it to our temperature. Sure. So that's, that was whatever it was, the 7th of, I've got the date there, 7th of, of April yeah. 2020. This was made pre-lockdown, the 3rd of October 19. So we're almost exactly at three years with this. And we yeah. think, having tried the cheese in three years, we think three years is about the right age, okay. crazily, for this, for this poacher 50. So I'm just going to iron this will be really. Wow, I've this is a bad, workout. Well, I've got a bad shoulder as well, which is not okay. Okay. <laughs> so, this is a winter, so summer cheese, winter cheese. Okay. Okay. Thank you. But it's been a really fun project, actually. A nice, so jo John only, our head cheese maker John, is the only one who makes the food. And he loves, mm. he loves making it because it's slightly different and... Fruitier on the nose. It's a bit more ready. Slight more bitterness in that one as well. In a positive way. See, I don't get bitter ah. at all there, but then again, that's that whole palate thing. It's certainly a bit, there's more to it, but. It tingles a little bit. It does, yeah. at the end, does. Actually, at the end of my tongue. It does a similar thing to the double barrel and the, the knuckle duster where it hits all the corners of the mouth. Mm -hmm. But stays with you. I, see, I, again, I really like that. No, and also different. They're also different. I mean, what a journey of flavours yeah. through poacher. These have all been fantastic to taste. Thank yeah. you so much for bringing oh, these, right. Tim. It's been brilliant. What an interesting yeah, journey of flavour profiles. Anything else anybody wants to add? Oh, I was going to ask you, this has been a really, really hot summer. Yes. Has it affected your make at all? That's a brilliant question, Kate. Um, it, well, what it's done is, so in July, never before, have we brought the cows in during the summer, but because our fields, like everyone's, were completely brown, yeah. there was no food for them in the day. Yeah. So we were having to bring them in, at night, so they'd go out during the day, and then at night time, they would come in just so they could get enough food to eat, and then they would go back out in the day. We've never, ever, ever done that before. It's unprecedented. So we used quite a bit of our winter feed. Yeah. Fortunately, we have lots of feed, so we're gonna have enough to get through because we're so cautious about, you know, it'd be catastrophic if you ran out. Oh my goodness, yeah. Um, does it stress the cows, that sort of heat? I mean, it, 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 it got up to a full oh, It did, I mean, they've it? got shelter in the fields. Not really, they look no. really chilled. Yeah. I mean, chilled. they're not, yeah. <laughs> well, not chilled, obviously, yeah. you know what? It's, not, it's not ideal, but- But they can adjust to it. They looked okay, yeah. Yeah. They, yeah. They, and they weren't behaving, you know, wasn't, they weren't, they weren't, none of them were harmed. No. There's shelter, there are trees around, and there's, there's and hedges, water. and there's obviously loads yeah. of water. Yeah, they drank, certainly drank a lot. Um, but no, and then in, at night they were in anyway, so they're in loose housed in, yes. in the bond, so that's cooler for them. Yeah, not, I, yeah, well, I wouldn't. I suppose it's going to be fascinating a couple of years down the line then. With your well, to see those cheese. cheeses. Yeah. But I think, I mean, the cheeses themselves were, in terms of in the dairy, were, were absolutely not not unusual, funny yeah. enough. Yeah. Um, I mean, the yield dropped a bit, so we had a little bit less milk. But other than that, no, not mm. really. No, it was. We managed okay. I think Good. it was difficult. It's just unple it's unpleasant for everybody, really, yes, isn't it? Which yes. is for all of us. It's, yes. It was pretty grim. And it's been uncharacteristic yeah. as well. And also, I mean, coming up for the future, I gather that you're going to do a little bit of a farm spot to go to a dairy. We are. So, very, I, this is a real scoop. Yes. Well, <laughs> sorry, should I have said that? No, it's fine. <laughs> fine. Yeah. Well, we were talking earlier about how collaborative our world is. Well, to demonstrate that, next Tuesday, Simon and I and our three cheesemakers are driving down to Somerset to visit Todd and Morgan Trudallan, who make Gorwood Caffili and they make Pitchfork Cheddar. Yeah. And we are going to make Lincolnshire Poacher in their vat with their milk and their equipment, but with our starter culture, our um, rennet and our knowledge. Yeah. And we're going to do it our way with their kit, and it's just a really interesting. They're really nice guys, and we really, although they're competitors, we get on really well. And 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 I think it's just a really interesting idea because we're all flying a little bit blind. 
is it the milk? Is it yeah. the recipe? Is it the this? Is it the that? So I think it'll really help us. I mean, it'll be difficult because we don't know their milk. So we yeah. know our milk really well, and we know how to treat it, and we know how it's going to behave. Yeah. We don't. Their, their milk, I know, is going to be different in terms of its fat and protein, and in terms of its how, how acid it is. And so we'll have to adapt and try and work it out. And on the day, we'll have to be pretty flexible. But I think what comes out of that will be intriguing. Okay. And we'll, we'll wrap some in cloth and we'll put some in our coating. Yeah. Mm. And then in 18 months time, we'll sit here again and taste those cheeses. Well, and hopefully also they're gonna come back to us and, and do the same. So yeah. they'll make pitchfork cheddar in our vat with our milk, with yeah. their- Just one vat. Just one masses. 6,000 yeah. litres is hot. Yeah. It's a bit of a risk. Yeah, it's 600 kilos of cheese that you're, <laughs> it's, it's, you're if you get it, you get it really wrong, if it's completely, you know, over acid or under acid or whatever, yeah. you, it, it could be a problem, but I, it's it's fun. It, and it's it's nice to collaborate. And I think, I'm not sure anyone's ever done this before. So I think it will be. It's a first. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's excellent. excellent. Well, That's thank brilliant. you for bringing your cheeses in too. Oh, um, it's always wonderful to yeah. taste Lincolnshire Poacher. Always. Thank you very much. Pleasure. Thank you.